Hello and welcome to a quick software development tutorial. This time the focus is on type checking and I show you an awesome TypeScript library that makes it simple and fast. Type checking or validation is something that is important whenever your apps or libraries receive data from the outside world. For example, you might have a library that receives complex types via an interface or you have a service with an API that gets data in JSON format from different clients or you wrote a client that receives data from a service. In all those cases, it's a good practice to validate validate the types of the data you receive and not simply make assumptions. Even if you get data from an API that is well documented and specified, it usually doesn't hurt to validate the data you receive while parsing it. If you then combine those runtime checks with static types you use in your apps, you can avoid many errors. And because writing those type checks yourself can be a bit of a burden, especially for complex nested types, I've started using a library called Typea. Let's have a look at what it does. So here you see the official documentation page of the library and I have to say it's well documented so if you want to use it or see what it can do make sure to check it out. In this video I'll just scratch the surface of what it can do but yeah as you can see it's set to be a transformer library and what it does you write some code in TypeScript for example, something here calling Typea. And during the compilation that, for example, if you have a read application, you do the build, or if you have Webpack, you build your application and you transpile it to JavaScript, Typea or a plugin you might use with Webpack will transform this function into a typical type check you would write yourself. So for example, here, string equals type of input. So this is something which writing manually can take a lot of time for very complex types where you have many fields in it. Often what you would do in such cases, for example, if you receive data from an API, you could use JSON schema, which would then mean you have yet another place where you define your types, you could still use it to generate code, but it's not so nice to maintain. And if you already write TypeScript and define your types in TypeScript, it's much nicer to just take those types and transform those into functions that do the type validation. And that's what Typea is for. And here are a few use cases. For example, what you get, you get a super fast runtime validator. So I didn't confirm those numbers here, but it's said to be very fast. Also JSON serialization. So you no longer need to use JSON stringify or the JSON parser to transform your JSON data, which you get via an API. You can directly use Typea, which then also does the validation along the way and it's still faster. Then you get some stuff for your AI applications you might write. So I haven't played around with that yet. Another thing which is very nice, you can transform your data into binary format. So to use it in a protocol buffer, which you can then use to exchange data between different apps. So this is also very nice. It already comes out of the box and you can generate random data. So if you need to write some tests, you need some data, then you can use this random data generator. So all in all, a lot of cool functionality and we now want to see how it works. So here's also a playground which is included with Typea and it already comes with an example which shows you exactly what it does. So here on the left side, this would be some example code you would write. So you import Typea and also this text and then you define in TypeScript your type. Now this is standard TypeScript types, but here those tags, those can be used to provide a little bit more information to Typea. So the code which is generated can do even more validation. For example, down here, you can define here this number, this H should have a minimum value and also an exclusive maximum. This way, the validation that is generated will also include this and not just check that H is a number. It will also check that the H will be within a range. And then down here, this is where you then use the type which you defined and for example, create a random object. You check if the generated object is of the type I member. You can use stringify or you can create the binary protobuffer, which you can then send to another application that uses protobuffers. If you then use the compilation step, for example, if you have read app, I'm going to show you how to install this and how to compile it. This would be what's generated. So it looks like a lot of code, but it's also, first of all, a complex type with additional checks and then it's many different functions that are generated here. So typically what you might only need is, for example, this is function or what you would want to do is some parsing or stringify. So you don't usually want to create all those functions. So it's usually not as much code that is generated. So I'd say the generated code is still pretty lightweight. So let's just look here at the check function because this is easy to follow along. First of all, it checks that here the ID is a string and then also it uses some Typea function 
functionality and yeah checks that it's UUID. Then next name is a string, age is a number and then here is where it checks that first of all it's greater equals than 20 and also here exclusive so smaller than 100. So this is what type here will generate if you write just this simple function for this type here. And then also down here you see the binary encoder and then you can execute it and see what it produces. And you see here there's a random member, age of 70. If I run it again, will be different random data. And then down here, check evaluates to true. We have some JSON string here, which you might want to create if you want to send it to an API. And then also here the binary format. So this is the functionality you get and there are many more functions. So just check out the documentation. But now let's have a quick look at how you can set this up. First of all, let's have a look at my TypeScript boilerplate. I'll link this below. So this is just a little boilerplate for the case that you want to write a little library which you want to use in a node app or in front end then you can just use my boilerplate and I already included typea here and as usual for me now it's a Vite project and yeah I want to touch on a few things that are very important first of all in the package JSON you see we now have down here under the dependencies we have typea and then in the TS config we have added typea here as a transform plugin and then there's one very important thing typea will only work properly if you have strict set to true and strict null checks set to true in your major TS config if you remove this and you compile the code it will look different and we're going to look at this in a sec then here in the white config I use a plugin, unplugin, type here. I also link this in the description. It's available also for Webpack and other systems you might use to transpile your code. You just add it here under the plugins as the first plugin. Now npm run build transpiles the code and we can quickly look here at the library index.js. Let's just save it to get a formatted version and also here at the code I have. So here in this case I have just defined some user data also with some optional fields and then down here I have a simple validate function for the user data. So this is an example for a library where the data that's passed in at first is unknown. So you say it should be a user object but since the code that's using a library could be JavaScript so some untyped code this could be anything. So this is where I just use this check function and I use type here's create is for this type here. And then down here in this example, I just use it. Now let's look at the code. This here, the is valid user data is basically what type here creates. So we see we have an ID, which is number, a name, which is a string, a surname, which is also a string, and then the nick, the age, and the friends. This can be null, so this is why this is odd here. It can be void null, which would be the undefined use case, or can be a string, this one here number, and this again a string. Now let's go to the TS config and remove both the strict null checks and the strict equals true up here. Save it and build again. Now first here it will already tell you that strict mode is required. So this is one important thing here. You need to have strict active, otherwise it will not work here. Now let's see if we can run it. So if we run it, Weed will just give you a warning here. So let's have a look in the browser. And this is something you have to know because if you build it, the transpiler will directly tell you you can't without strict. But yeah, if you run the dev mode and forgot it, it will still run, but you might get a strange result, which I'm going to show you in a second. So let's go to the developer tools and look at the sources. And here we can also look at the compiled code here in the index.ts. Let's zoom in a bit. You see again. We have number equals type of input ID. Then we have string type of input name, string type of input surname. And now here's the important thing. Remember that for the nickname, we also allow null in the type. But now here this check, it's now just allowing, okay, either it's undefined, void null, or it's a string. The null check is no longer part of this. And that's because we removed the strict from TS config. So type here just uses the language TypeScript and its inherent functionality to generate the code. And if you make changes to the TS config, then the generated code will also look different. And you'll not get the expected results if you forget to set strict to true because then go back to our type here. If we now were to pass a nick of null, so let's go to our test here and let's say we pass nick, which would be correct based on how we define the type. But if we go now to our 
browser here and look at the output, it says invalid user data, meaning this check now fails. And that's just because I forgot or in this case explicitly removed a strict. So let's add this again, recompile, go back to the browser and now it's valid user data. Now what's left for the tutorial, I want to quickly show you what you need to install and how to set up type here. Here we have the project I used to show you the difference between REST and GraphQL. I'll also link this in the description. In the front end we use React, so I'm going to show you now how to add type here to React. And we go into the front end. First of all, we do npm install type here. Next, since this is a Vite app, we install the unplugin. So again, npm install this time as a dev dependency. And I also will link this in the description. Now we can use npx type here setup, which will ensure that we have, for example, our tsconfig setup correctly. So we're using npm here. Now here, this is important. If you use Vite to set up your React project, you will get three different tsconfig files. So this one is used for your app. This one is used just for your Vite config and the normal tsconfig here this is where both are referenced. Now the question is, where do you have to now add the type here setup? So the strict settings, and this is very, very important. If you just add it to the app, then it will not work. You will get the same problem, which I just showed you where the null check is not included. So make sure to add it to the tsconfig JSON. Now this gives you a little compiler error because the compiler options object is not part of this. So let's just quickly add it. Just put it here and run it again. And now it's set up correctly. So we have the transform plugin and you see it added strict null checks and strict. Now this is set up correctly and it will work in your front end. Next, we also have to add the unplugin to the Vite config here. So import it from the installed package and then add it here to the plugins before React. And we can save it. And now we are ready to go. Now let's quickly test it. First of all, also, quickly show you here under app. I again have here the user data type and in this demo app, which I already showed in another tutorial, we have a fetch users function. This one here uses GraphQL and down here also added one which uses the rest functionality from my middleware. And what we have here, we just get some data, we parse it. And what we would like to do here is check or confirm that this parse JSON data is of the type we specified up here. And for it, I have defined here with the create is function uh, is user data method. So let's quickly add this to the fetch users rest down here. So instead of just setting the data, we will first check that this is the user data. And now we can also test it. Let's go to the app. So this is the app. So this here is the GraphQL set of things, getting the schema, fetching the users. And now here's the new function, fetch users rest. Let's check this. And here we get an error. Why is that? Let's have a look. So how did I define it here? So if it's user data, I just set it to the state which would display it. Otherwise, I set it to error. Now, the thing is what we did here, we're just checking it should be of type user data, but what we actually get is an array of user data. So let's fix this, save it again, go back to the app. And now if we fetch the users here, we'll properly get the printed result. So yeah, that's it. That's it for the demo. Links to the GitHub repos are in the description below. Tapia is a very helpful library, makes things much easier to set up and ensure that your data types match if you're using APIs or if you allow a user to make changes to some JSON data in your application, then you can just use Tapia to verify that this is still the correct type. That's it. See you in the next one. Bye.